Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and we're sitting here at 34 and 25, and we are this close to the draft, only one day away. So before hopping into the draft, I just want to kind of look at what our farm system is looking like, starting out in double A. And Alvis Aguilla, he's kind of our prized possession here. B potential, 74 overall at only 21 years old. But he's just getting better. And he is hurt at the moment, but I think he is coming off of that injury right now. So he's going to be back pretty soon. But Braden Scott, he's actually having a pretty good season. This is his first year in our system. And you see he's 67 overall, 19 years old. Micah Lynn, one of the surprises here, 69 overall. He is 22. He is a middle infielder as well. One guy I did want to highlight here is Tim Hooks Jr. His, his potential went down. He was at an A potential. Now he's down to a B potential, 19 years old, and I'm pretty surprised to see his uh, ratings drop like that. I want to look at some other guys here. How about uh, Brandon Rodriguez, who I think is actually second in home runs in our uh, in our organization here in AA or AAA. He's got seven. And then uh, one other guy I kind of wanted to look at here. Uh, let's just look at our pitchers here. Tirso Garcia the third. I mean, look at that. 0.94 whip, 6-1, and one, 162 ERA. Let's just look at his ratings here. And he is pretty good, 67 overall. 22 years old, he's still got some years to develop. So I'm actually going to keep developing him there. Santiago, Va Santiago Vasquez, Vasquez, I can't even say people's names here. He's a lefty, he's 18 years old, he's a guy to keep your eye on. So not much in AAA though, I think we're having kind of a down year. Braxton Garrett, he's got a 119 whip, he's actually doing all right. Corbin Burns has a 123 whip. He's just kind of a guy in our organization. I don't know if he's going to move up at all, but he's a guy just to have there in our organization just for depth. And then some other guys, Elise Hernandez is getting better. He's 24 years old. He still hasn't touched the show yet, but I'm actually excited for his future. And then on the offensive side of the ball, uh, Asan Diaz hitting 235. Max Liebham hitting 250. Nobody's really hitting a great average at Triple A. Brian Hernandez hitting 249. And not much there. Jemai Jones is coming off the DL now. And it looks like he only had a one at bat. So let's hop into the draft. We have the 24th pick in the first round. And then we have a, a six, number six pick in the competitive balance round A here. So that's pretty good because we have two picks early. So let's get to that pick. So first, let's look at the number one overall, Pete Vickers. You see he is... Uh, pretty much a pretty good pitcher i mean look at him i mean he's got 80 stamina right away i don't know what his overall is going to be he says 65 but our scouts i don't know they're they're kind of drunk right now <laughs> he, somebody pointed out that you know they're not very good and yeah i noticed it and i'm probably going to fire him after this offseason but there's no point in doing it now since this draft is already here so let's look at some guys here so we have some guys fully scouted a closing pitcher is fully scouted here he's 80 potential but actually, you know what? I, I don't know about getting a closer right away. We do see a catcher here, Clint Afaro, but he's only 45 overall. I don't really trust that. And I kind of got to go after an 80 potential guy. There's not many that I have fully scouted. But, I mean, just the catcher and the closing pitcher here. I don't know if I trust that. So I'd rather have a high accurate accuracy on maybe a 70 potential guy than have, uh, you know, the low potential on one of these other guys how about patrick lawrence he is 21 in a third baseman uh maybe he can play more positions right now he can't but uh that can obviously change christian park is a closer i'm kind of torn on this one and we do have jimmy best here i didn't see this guy so he's 80 potential he's a shortstop maybe we'll go after him you know we, you can always use a shortstop help and maybe he's a guy that we should go after. I think this is the safe pick here with our first pick, Jimmy Best. Let's go with him. The rest of the picks will be a little tough because we don't have any accuracy on any of these guys. We do have them on a couple of catchers here. Larry Johnson, who's 65 potential, and Elvis Armas as well. But they're kind of lower with the potential there. But I'd rather go with the higher potential guy. Let's go with Javier Carrillo, who's actually 80 potential. And let's just get him as a closer. He is 24, though. That kind of does alarm. That is kind of alarming. 
So you know what? I think I might go with Christian Park instead. He's 20 years old, 70 overall, 70 potential. Let's just go with him. So I do want to pick up a couple of catchers here, and Elvis Armas looks like he's pretty good. You see his blockings up there and his reaction. That's pretty good defensively, and his hitting isn't bad. I mean, look at his hot zones. They, it, they're pretty red, and compared to him to Larry Johnson, the other catcher I was looking at, his bright spots are a little brighter, so let's go with him. On to our fourth pick. I'm pretty much just banking on potential here. Why not go after another infielder? Especially since, you know, we're thinking about trading Machado. I think it's a safe bet to get a uh, guy here. Look at this guy. He's a shortstop and he plays left field and center field. I kind of like that. And you're going in pretty blind right here. He is 21 years old. George Weathers. Let's just go with him. So we haven't picked pitching much and we have some older guys here. Here's the other guy, Russ Lindstrom. So he's 80 potential and he is 22, a little older. But, uh, you know, another guy here, Reggie Ellis, look at him. And he's probably not going to be that good if I do draft him. But why not take a chance? He's 19. He's a right-handed thrower here. He has a five-pitch repertoire, which is pretty good as well. So let's just go with him. I like that, Reggie he Ellis. So here in the fifth round, Russ Lindstrom is still there. And he is 22. So I might go after him, but I looked at Rob Crowder, no, not him either. Um, I'm, I'm going with one of these top guys here, Luis Valencia. He's pretty good, but he's 22, and uh, I just don't know about him. So I'm just going to go after Russ Lindstrom. Let's just see how he turns out to be. Maybe he'll turn out to be something. Now on to our last pick. This is kind of the boomer bust pick, so let's just see, uh, based on potential, who we want to go after um i don't really know I i'm going after anybody here brian hashimoto i think maybe he's a pitcher that we can maybe go after H how about neville marshall i don't know about him either he doesn't really have great speed as an outfielder maybe does he have power doesn't really have that great of power either let's look at a gucci here he's 18 years old Oh, I kind of like him. He's he's a pretty good player here. He hits right-handed. He's from Japan as well. He's got good contact. He's got good reaction. He's got decent arm strength. He's only 18 years old. Why not? Let's go after him. Let's see what we can get after him, get for him. So that's going to be our draft here. Let's just take a look at these picks. So let's look at Jimmy Best. He's pretty good. 75 overall right away, 88 potential. I mean, that's a pretty good first pick right there, as he might be one of the best guys in our organization right away. Christian Park was our second pick. We did all right with him, 73 overall, 74 potential. Elvis Armas, remember we said we just needed a catcher, and we kind of reached on him, and he's not that good. <laughs> but George Weathers we hit on. Look at this guy. He's a potential, only 53 overall. But, I mean, that's definitely somebody we can grow on our organization, maybe even use as trade bait. Reggie Ellis doesn't end up being that good, only deep potential. Russ Lindstrom, the 22-year-old, he's 61 overall, but he's got C potential, high C, and Aguchi ends up not being who we thought he would be. But Jimmy Best, I'm really excited about him, 88 potential, 75 overall, and then George Weathers, another A potential guy. So we go through the month of June, and you know what? We ended up taking a bunch of losses here in the middle of our schedule. We got swept in a two-game series versus the Mets. Then we actually took three of four from the Padres. That's a good sign. But then we lost a tough four-game series versus the Giants. And let's just see these games because it doesn't make any sense. How are we losing these games? Adam Eaton's only hitting 234. Wow, what a production dip from him. As you can see, Machado's only hitting 250. Santana's the only one that's hitting high up. He's hitting 298. And Brinson's hitting 238. I mean, nobody's really hitting well. You know, Francisco Cervellius came around a little bit. He's hitting 279. And then in this game, we had Taylor Ward at third base. That's actually pretty surprising. He's hitting 185. So then towards the end of the month, we kind of split these games here, going against Cincinnati, Philly, and the Yankees there to end the, end the month. Then as we move into All-Star break, you can see it got kind of spotty. Just a lot of 
weird wins, a lot of weird losses. I mean, look at this. I mean, we're losing one to seven Atlanta, but then we end up going three or four for, against them. And we're just not being consistent at all as a team. And let's just look at the standings. We're actually tied for first, 52 to 52 and 43 going into All-Star break. But we do have some good news. Michael Fulmer does make the NL All-Star team. So that's a pretty good sign for us. Also, Jose Torres, he makes the All-Star team. So 0.93 ERA, a 0.69 whip. He's having a phenomenal year. I mean, wow, I didn't expect that from him at all. Danny Barnes is actually there too. You see him, he's seven and one with a 109 whip out of the bullpen. That's actually amazing. And that's probably what's keeping us still in the race. But look at Bartolo Colon Jr. He's got a .91 whip. Wow, I'm surprised to see him doing so well. Look at his hits per nine, gone up plus seven as he's now at 82 overall. And he's having himself a phenomenal year. Look at the turnaround from last year. Went from 1.49 to 0.9 whip and then a 5.24 ERA to 136. I mean, he's almost almost matched his strikeout total from last year. Look at that, only three off. So let's just look to see if anybody else made the all-star game. And it doesn't look like it. I don't see anybody else that has made the all-star game. So that just shows how much our pitching is carrying us. So we do get an interesting trade offer actually from the Diamondbacks. Look what they want to trade us. They want to trade us Archie Bradley and that's in exchange for Alvis Aguilla and Tirso Garcia the third. That's actually a really interesting trade but here's the thing. Archie Bradley is going to be a free agent come next year and yes he is 90 overall. Yes he's a potential. Yes he's only 27. But to see Tirso Garcia in the season he's having in double A and to see his development, I mean, look, I mean, you can't see his stats now, but we just saw him a little bit ago. And then one of our top prospects in Alvis Aguilla. No, nah, I, I got to say no to this one. I would say it if RG Bradley was, was on maybe another year of a contract, but I just can't do it if we're making a playoff push and we don't really need bullpen. So I don't really need him here. So I'm going to actually decline this trade. So let's just look at some deals around the league before shopping. I'm pretty pretty sure I'm going to shop Machado here. Look at the top here. Orlando Arcia gets traded to the Tigers for Trevor Rogers and Jose Cordero. Wow, what a big trade that one is. And then looking at the bottom here, Marcus Stroman gets traded to the Mariners for Sam Carlson and Evan White. What a big trade there. Then the Yankees get involved, trading Clint Frazier for Tony Kemp. And I remember Clint Frazier, I mean, he's still probably one of their best prospects, one of, one of the top prospects in their organization. But I remember at one point, I think people were saying that he was going to be one of the, you know, up and coming stars. And he still might be. I mean, there's still a chance. He's still young and everything. Elvis Andrus gets traded as well for Grant Holmes and Peter Mott to the Athletics. That's a big trade as well. Let's just keep going. There's Yar Yaro Munoz getting traded. We actually had him last year. Let's see if there's any other guys we kind of recognize here. Justin Smoke gets traded to the Yankees. And then Tommy Joseph gets traded to the Yankees as well. So the Yankees are making a bunch of trades here. <laughs> so I'm just using the trade finder here to look at trades involving Manny Machado. I came across this one. I mean, look at this ridiculousness. Mookie Betts and Dustin Pedroia. I think that just shows that this trade finder needs to be tweaked just a little bit because there is no way that they would do this. Wow, I, mean, I can't even believe that this is even a suggested trade here. I just want to look at like all of the trades that we see. I want to. I'm probably going to try to trade them to the Padres. If I can't get a deal to them, I probably will not make the trade. But just looking at some of these trades here, Xander Bogarts is on the Brewers here in this franchise uh colton wong there's archie bradley they're still trying to get rid of him trying to give up zach grinky as well charlie blackman from the rockies that's an interesting one a lot of great players in that trade charlie blackman john gray and wade davis then the dodgers would give up kenley jansen i mean i just don't see anything that's gonna blow me away maybe this trade looks like it might be worth it though madison bumgarner and Danell Lincoln, I have no idea who the Lincoln guy is, but man, this this actually 
could make make it work a little bit. The salaries need to match a little bit. That's actually a pretty good trade, but like I said, I'm not going to trade him to anybody else but the Padres, so I'm actually going to keep him at the deadline. I don't think I'm going to make at least that trade. So what I am going to decide to do, though, is get some help on the offensive side of the ball. Domingo Santana is actually on the DL. He has a uh, fractured wrist. He's out one to two months, 42 days to be exact. And then Johnny Giovatella actually fractured his forearm as well. And you can just see some other guys in our organization are hurt. So we're going to try to make a little trade here. So we decide to put together a deal to get another outfielder here in the absence of Domingo Santana. And we come across Rosny Castillo. And he is 32 years old. He is an older guy, but I think he can help our offense out this season immediately. As you see, he's hitting actually pretty good on the season, 336. And what is it going to take to give him, get him? Max Kepler, who is actually not even in uh, double A or single A or triple A. He's actually in single A. And then Greg Garcia, actually, who is our starting second baseman at the moment. And I don't, I'm not really, you know, sad about giving him up. He hasn't really having a great season and we do need a spark on offense. So we're going to offer this trade and they are going to accept that. So then we kind of look at Drew Steckenrider and, you know, he's not having the greatest season. He hasn't really been that great for us in this franchise at all. And this season he's 0-4. He's got one save, but look at the strikeout to walk ratio. I mean, it's basically 2-1. to one. That's not good enough. And his whip is 158 with a 4.74 ERA. So we're actually going to unload him for Eddie Rosario, another outfielder. But what I like about him is that he can play infield. He can play second base. So he's kind of an all-around utility guy. And I can definitely use that. And honestly, getting rid of second rider won't really hurt us much. So I'm going to make this move. And uh, they are going to accept that. So in the month of August, Domingo Santana does return towards the end of the month, but we end up going 12 and 13, not a great month. And then in the month of September, we actually do not end up making the playoffs. And it's unfortunate. We did end up finishing four games over 500, and it just wasn't enough. As let's just look at the final standings here as the Mets clinch the division. So they end up winning the, the division by six games, and we weren't even close. I mean, let's just look at the NL wild card as um, if I can find it here. Looks like we've actually finished a game back from the Nationals for the NL wild card. So it looks like they barely beat us out as we ended the, ended the season on a six-game losing streak, and that actually lost us that wild card spot. So it looks like we just collapsed. So let's just look at the stats here to end season three as we head into the offseason. Justin Bohr did not start, but he does lead our team in average at 309. Domingo Santana came back from the DL hitting the ball pretty well. He hit 308, 14 home runs and only 50 RBIs. And we didn't have a big RBI guy this year, and we thought we would as Manny Machado only hit 63. That's definitely something that we'll have to address going into the next season. Josh Bell, I believe, led our team in RBIs. Let's just see. So, yeah, he led our team in RBIs at 79, but we didn't have a big, uh, I guess the top of our lineup wasn't getting on base much, and I kind of attribute that to what is Adam Eaton doing? He hit 216 this year. Wow, we definitely may have, should have, we should have maybe dealt him at the trade deadline. Look at that drop off. He went from 295 to 216 after switching teams in the same division. That's a huge drop off. And the young guys actually had down years as well. Taylor Ward only hit 209. Lucas Sali hit 229. Lewis Brinson continues to struggle. He hit 240. I mean, just a bad year all around for our offense. And maybe that means we'll have to make some changes. We did get Josh Reddick. I think he was the bright spot in this lineup. But he hit 286. That's pretty good. And especially since he actually was a full-time outfielder the whole year. 500 at bats and everything. I think he had the most at bats. No, he didn't. Adam Eaton did 638. So I don't know what we're going to do in the offseason, but one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to unload some guys. I don't know who's going to go. Manny Machado's on the list. And now, I mean, even Adam Eaton's on the list. So hit subscribe, hit that like button. Let me know what you guys think of this season. Who, who should I unload? So stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go.